Since 1919, when Benjamin Harris designated it a national park, the Grand Canyon has remained a cherished tourist attraction and iconic landmark. While visitors admire its majestic beauty, scientists also find it an intriguing subject of study. Paleontologists and geologists delve into the rock formations, attempting to determine the age of the canyon and its walls. However, recently, a team of experts embarked on a research expedition to the Grand Canyon, unearthing findings that are poised to revolutionize history and our understanding of this remarkable geological wonder. So what exactly did they uncover, and how will it impact the Grand Canyon? Let us delve into the spine-chilling discoveries made by scientists in the Grand Canyon. Prehistoric Life Forms The journey of discovering life forms began with a fortunate incident when a massive rock dislodged from a towering cliff, exposing intriguing markings. Alan Krill, a geologist, and his student were on a hiking trip in the Grand Canyon National Park's Bright Angel Trail when Krill's sharp eye caught sight of unusual rock imprints resembling footprints. Fascinated by the find, he took pictures and shared them with his old friend Stephen Rowland, a renowned paleontologist of the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Rowland's analysis of the photos revealed that Krill had stumbled upon ancient fossilized tracks, estimated to be about 313 million years old. These remarkable footprints turned out to be the oldest evidence of vertebrate animals ever discovered in the Grand Canyon. It was proposed that the prints belonged to an amniote, a hard-shelled egg-laying animal. The key to their excellent preservation was the weight of the rock bearing the markings, which had fallen from the 314 million year old Manakacha Formation, a large outcropping of sandstone. The sand surrounding the tracks played a crucial role in preserving these fossils over millions of years. Upon closer examination, Roland identified the fossil markings as two separate reptilian animals crossing the boulder diagonally. One of the animals appeared to be a foot long and used a sideways stepping pattern known as a lateral sequence gait. The question of whether the tracks were left by two distinct reptiles or the same one at different times remains a subject of curiosity for scientists. The slight difference in speed between the second set of tracks and the first led Roland to conclude that lateral sequence gait is common among tetrapods, or four-legged vertebrates. This significant finding provides evidence of early crawling vertebrates that had not been discovered elsewhere until now. Additionally, it serves as prehistoric proof of amniotes living in dunes, preceding other evidence by at least 8 million years. The discovery sheds new light on the ancient history of life forms in the Grand Canyon and adds to our understanding of the remarkable diversity of life that once thrived in this iconic natural wonder. Uranium the Grand Canyon holds deep spiritual and cultural significance for 11 Native American tribes, yet it faces a threat of uranium contamination, which is unexpected in such a revered place. Numerous uranium mines and mining claims exist just outside the park boundaries. Uranium deposits are buried within layers of sandstone, siltstone and mudstone across the southwest, including geological formations known as breccia pipes in the Grand Canyon region. Mining in this area traces back to the 1870s, and by the 1950s, uranium operations began near Grand Canyon Village at Orphan Mine, with at least eight mines operating close to the park over time. Presently, the active canyon mine, now known as Pinion Plain Mine, poses a particular threat to the springs within the Grand Canyon. In the mid-2000s, the rising uranium price attracted companies seeking to extract high-grade ore in the Grand Canyon area, resulting in thousands of mining claims on public lands surrounding the National Park. A collective effort by anglers, local governments, hunters and native communities led to a temporary mining ban around the Grand Canyon, supported by the Havasupai tribe, whose reservation relies on springs for various essential purposes. In 2012, a 20-year ban on uranium mining was initiated on approximately 1 million acres of public lands near the Grand Canyon, bringing some relief to the Havasupai tribe. However, mining companies are eagerly awaiting the possible lifting or expiration of the ban, as nearly 600 mining claims still remain active in the area as of May 2022. Despite Congress's attempts to pass legislation for a permanent ban on new mining operations near the park, the threat of uranium contamination persists, casting a shadow on the future preservation of this natural wonder. The Missing Billion Years Worth of Rocks For many years, experts have been intrigued by a curious phenomenon in the Grand Canyon. 
The canyon's rock layers serve as a historical record, each representing a different era in Earth's past. However, an anomaly known as the Great Unconformity caught the attention of geologist John Wesley Powell in 1869. He noticed a significant gap where rock layers dating back over a billion years seemed to be missing from the geological record. Years later, geologists confirmed the Great Unconformity when they dated rocks with ages of 1.4 to 1.8 billion years in close proximity to rocks with ages of 520 million years. This unusual gap raised questions about what happened to the missing rocks and why such an intricate geological history existed in the Grand Canyon. Scientists proposed various explanations for this phenomenon, suggesting that over time, some rocks may have been eroded and carried away into the ocean. To investigate further, the team employed thermochronology, a method that measures the heat stored in rocks using chemical analysis techniques. Their findings revealed that the Great Unconformity might have occurred during the violent breakup of the supercontinent Rodinia, which reshaped and disturbed rock layers between 633 and 750 million years ago. The study also showed that the geological deformations were different on the canyon's western and eastern sides. Around 700 million years ago, the basement rock on the western side seemed to have risen to the surface, while on the eastern side, half of the same rock layers were buried beneath several kilometres of sediment. Though the findings of this research do not provide a definitive explanation for the Great Unconformity, the team sees it as a significant step towards understanding this intriguing geological mystery in the Grand Canyon. The Mysterious Caves The Grand Canyon holds another intriguing aspect, its caves. Currently, we know of slightly more than 300 discovered caves, but geologists believe that the canyon might actually hide up to 1,000 of them. The question arises, what stories and treasures could these caves conceal? It's a question that has captivated the minds of many. This curiosity about hidden caverns and their secrets originates from a particular incident in 1909. The Arizona Gazette published a piece about a group of explorers from the Smithsonian Institution who allegedly stumbled upon a mysterious network of vast caves within the canyon. These caves were said to be large enough to accommodate 50,000 people and they were filled with statues, weapons, seeds and other treasures unlike anything known to Native Americans. In fact, the artifacts appeared to be of Tibetan or Egyptian origin. This captivating tale had everyone enthralled, and it sparked rumours of an underground Egyptian city in the Grand Canyon. However, the Smithsonian Institution has no records of such explorers mentioned in the article, and there are no relics from the supposed expedition. Some suggest that it was merely a ploy by the Gazette to boost paper sales, while others entertain the idea that the Smithsonian is deliberately concealing the story to maintain a certain narrative. Additionally, conspiracy theorists speculate about the caverns being a portal to the fourth dimension, a heavily guarded region inaccessible to anyone at present. There are even rumours of Egyptian pyramids and artefacts in a forbidden area of the Grand Canyon, possibly inspired by the tales of the caves. Regardless of the credibility of these stories and rumours, they undeniably add an intriguing dimension to discussions while exploring the Grand Canyon. One thing remains certain, the Grand Canyon will continue to mystify explorers and scientists for years to come. Its immense size suggests that we have only begun to scratch the surface when it comes to unravelling the mysteries held within its depths. The Rampart Cave Discovery The Grand Canyon Caves also hold a treasure trove of various plants and animal remains, offering valuable insights into the region's history during the Ice Age. These caves vary in size, ranging from tight spaces where one must crawl on all fours to larger caverns that could host a party. Throughout these caves, bats, birds, wood rats, now extinct mountain goats and sloths have found an ideal habitat. Remarkably, the bone-dry conditions within the caves have preserved the fossils exceptionally well, allowing researchers to access 40,000 years of history and gain knowledge about life during the Ice Age. Exploring historical markers, scientists started with Rampart Cave on the far western side of the canyon. There, scientists discovered dung balls scattered across the floor, seemingly fresh, but they belonged to a 500-pound Shasta ground sloth which had been extinct for nearly 10,000 years. 
Radiocarbon dating revealed that these sloth dung deposits were between 40,000 and 11,000 years old. The analysis of the dung provided valuable information about the sloth's diet, as it contained pollen from the plants the animal had consumed. Additionally, other remains were found including skulls of extinct mountain goats and mummified birds. Led by Steve Elmsley, a biology professor at the University of North Carolina and an expert on Ice Age birds, the expedition revealed that the Grand Canyon birds likely dined on megafauna, which were large animals. However, as the megafauna became extinct, it could have had implications for the survival of these birds as well. The findings from these caves contribute significantly to our understanding of the region's ancient ecosystems and the creatures that once inhabited them. Which of these findings has intrigued you the most? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel for more captivating content. Thanks for watching.